Hi, Hi, Fang for MMA Fight Corner with UFC heavyweight Travis Brown. Tell Travis, you have a fight coming up here with Gabriel Gonzaga at the Ultimate Fighter 17. How excited are you about that upcoming fight? I'm super excited about it. Um, you know, just to be able to get back in there and, and uh, get my training up to full speed and get back into camp and into that setting and mindset. And, you know, it's just uh, it's exciting to get back there. Yeah, it's been a while. You had the injury after the Bigfoot fight, and that was also your first loss. So that, how did you grow from that? How did you learn from that? What kind of changes are you making coming up for Gabriel Gonzaga? You know, um, something like that uh, you can't plan for. So to make any changes coming from for Gabriel Gonzaga in, in my training that from my last fight, hasn't nothing's really changed. Um, I know, uh, you know, what I have to strengthen as far as my body goes, which is obviously my hamstring. Um, but you know, as, as, as far as that goes, I think it was more mental than anything, just overcoming, you know, your, your loss and your, especially your first loss as a, as a professional athlete and, um, you know, growing, growing in that sense, you know, not, maybe not physically, even though I've, I've grown physically as well. I'm, I'm already lighter than what I was before. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's a testament to, to my training and my diet and, and, you know what what you see also stems from your mental like uh, uh your mental drive and and where i've put in the work mentally for this uh for this fight and from my last fight losing yeah, that actually it says a lot for you to have to go through that process as a fighter do the fans really know how grueling that is for you as a fighter to try to go through those developments and try to make those changes what processes do you start with just i guess as a base to to get to that point where you realize that you need to have a change yeah you know it's it's funny because a lot of people it's really easy and, and this is where it's this is uh, you know you, you can't put any anything on fans and you know general fans and stuff like that because you know it's hard to think about you know what maybe your spouse is going through or what you know your your close family is going through let alone you know some guy that you saw once on tv and you hear a couple things about him like and then you make judgments about him it's really you know i mean it is what it is but um you can't you can't really judge somebody like that. Like I don't even know what's going through my friends when they win or lose. You know what's going through their head and what they're gonna have to change and this and that. You know, so it's, it's yeah, it is what it is. With the Jackson's camp, I heard that you guys have a new addition. Is Frank Mir actually training there right now for his upcoming fight with Daniel Cormier? That's what I heard. I haven't been there yet. I actually leave tomorrow to go to camp for the next seven weeks. Um, so I'll see him on Monday. But um, I have heard that he's there and training and, and getting ready. And he's going out there, I guess, during the weeks and going back home to see his family on the weekends. And, you know, it would be a great great advantage for me to have him there, especially fighting a guy like Gabriel Gonzaga, whose ground game is some of the best in the, in the UFC heavyweight division. You know, it would be really good to, to get – get some time in with Frank. You have a couple of big things coming up with the camp also. John Jones obviously fighting Chael. That's coming up. And then Michelle Watterson, uh, the karate hottie, which we know you did a promotional video for. Uh, what could you have to say about the quality and the level of the fighters at the camp and the upcoming fights that they have? You know, it's uh, you, you can't get anywhere that's better, I don't think. And, and you know, we're, we're – uh, we're a hotbed for champions to, to train and, and for, you know, hard work to, to, to show all your hard work. And, you know, just the fact of, of going up to high elevation and doing everything that the other guys are doing, but at 6,000 feet, 7,000 feet, sometimes 12,000 feet, um, you know, it just, it's going to do nothing but bring the best out of you. And, uh, you know, Michelle Watterson and all the girls there that are training and, and, uh, you know John Jones, Frank Mir, uh, you know all the bo- all the guys there that are training, and you know uh, we all we all have each other's back, and you know I think as as we are uh, positive, we're also you know we're not we're not how do I say this nicely is we're we're I'll, I'll point out what somebody's doing wrong as well, you know what I mean, and they'll do it to me, you know because we have our best the best interest in mind for our, for our teammates, and if they're not doing something right, then we'll let them know and. And, uh, you know, have a, have a concern and, you know, just it doesn't mean, you know, I have to like you as a person, but I, I respect you as an athlete. 
On the UFC ranking system that's been released, your name was in some of the people's in the top 10 um, on the overall rankings also. Where do you, what do you think about the rankings and where it places fighters and just the, I guess, the newness like, that it is in the UFC to have that kind of a system in place now? Well, I think something like that has to start somewhere. You know, you have to have some kind of base, and, and it's going to change the the requirements or or the, you know, how to get into the top ten or how to get ranked and stuff like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change and evolve into something that works. Um, you know, right now I think it's a little questionable because it's it's, again, based off of I think a lot of people that don't really – aren't involved in the sport and um besides the from a media aspect you know like go out there and train and do this and you know get involved with it and i think then you know your opinion would matter to me but um for me the rankings don't really mean anything um it's just a number by name and uh same thing with your record it's just a number by your name it doesn't matter when you when you get in there and you the, the cage closes, it's one man against another, or you know, like tonight, one woman against another woman, and uh, we all bleed the same. Speaking of the women, obviously we're here tonight for Ronda and Carmouche. Do you have a pick on that fight, or what are your thoughts on the women being in the UFC? You know, I've always been um, kind of an underdog. I always root for the underdog kind of person, and um, you know, which in this case is Liz. You know, and and um, I really hope that that all of her hard work really pays off and she gives a performance that that she's proud of and and I and I and I wish the best for for both of them Rhonda as well you know she's worked hard and and I think you know she's kind of gotten a bad rap because people think that she's she's just been handed some of her success but um you know to get to any kind of point you're gonna have to put in some of your time and um you know, it's, it's, again, the UFC is so new and, and, you know, women's MMA in the UFC is even newer. Um, you know, I, I personally think that, that they should have had a tournament just like they had the 125ers do a tournament to see who's the, who, who's the champion, you know, and not trying to take anything away from Ronda, but, um, that's how I think it should have been done. Um, but I think they both put in their hard work and I, and I hope that they both come out and get a performance that they're both proud of. Thank you for your time, Travis, and we wish you all the best in the future.